This is session four of your traffic and SEO training. In this session, you're going to learn about press release marketing and also WordPress SEO so you can have a fully optimized WordPress blog. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is online publicity benefits. So basically, you know, publicity, it's an inexpensive way to promote your website and build your credibility. And, you know, that's one of the important factors that I love so much about press releases. It actually really builds up your business's credibility because a lot of people look at press releases as, you know, kind of an authoritative thing because they think that big businesses, you know, are in the news, that kind of thing. It enables you when you're doing this kind of online PR to actually set yourself up as an authority type website and you know gives you an authority helps you build backlinks which we'll touch on here in a bit but press releases serve a lot of different purposes for you and it's it's one of these you know I guess you could consider it almost an offline marketing technique but we're actually gonna be focusing on online but using some of these strategies I'm sharing you with press releases have actually had been featured in newspapers a couple different times uh, in newspapers and radio shows for just a standard affiliate website believe it or not uh, because of the way you can spin the press release to your media and you can get some great traffic that way through newspapers. Press releases can really increase your sales, give your website more exposure, and help your website get traffic for many years down the road, and it will really enhance the image of your business. Just like I was saying, you know, a lot of big businesses use press releases, and so you know, you're on these, these high authority sites, you're on sites, you know, even like Google News and sites like that, your, your business can appear on those by utilizing these strategies. And one thing, you know, I mentioned your site can get traffic for years down the road. A lot of these sites that I'm going to talk about submitting your press release to, they will stay out there for, you know, five, six years. I've got press releases I submitted for some of my very first clients uh, when I was first doing work for people six, seven years ago that are still starting to show up, that are still on the internet for their business name, that are still actually driving traffic to their website. And, you know, that that's over, we're going on six plus years now there. And that's just for work you did one time. So just like, all the other things I'm, you know, I teach here, it's it's so much better than regular advertising because it's not like every month for the last six years that business has had to renew their, you know, their press release or something. You know, basically you submit it and it's going to be out there, and so the, it's going to help you grow exponentially because the more of these you can get out there, it's all about you know quantity and and quality, but getting some you know a large amount of these press releases out here, and I'll show you how to spin things so that you can write a bunch of different press releases for one website. So the internet is where people are going for their information, so you definitely want to leverage that. And so that's why we're going to basically, all I'm focusing on here is online publicity instead of offline. Uh, because anyhow, people access their news online now anyways. And so, you know, basically that's what you want to, that's the key component right there. So press releases and website traffic. Press releases can help build backlinks to your business, which helps with with SEO. And as you guys will recall, in one of the first trainings where I talked about search engine optimi optimization, I talked about backlinks. And basically, the importance of backlinks is that they kind of act as votes for your website. And so, the more votes that you get for your website, the more you know authority your site's going to look in the eyes of Google because they look at that as a factor, and the better your site's going to rank overall. And so, submitting press releases using the strategies I'm laying out here is going to help you build backlinks. And on top of that, it's going to build exposure, build up credibility. All these things are going to be working synergistically in your favor to improve your business. And so, press releases are a big component of your marketing campaign. It doesn't matter if it's just an affiliate site, if if it's a site selling you know physical products it doesn't matter if you're a chiropractor in Tulsa you know Oklahoma trying to get traffic to your to your website or to your business it really doesn't matter what kind of website business you're running what kind of business you're running you can leverage press releases on the internet to really get some good traffic going one other thing you know I touched on that helps really get you some website exposure on these high traffic sites and these sites already have a captive audience and, and what's interesting with some of these sites I'm gonna share with you is there's actually news agencies that do browse these sites. There's actually journalists and, and such looking for stories that will actually appear on some of these sites and may get in touch with you and you may end up running your site somewhere. But the main reason you're doing it is, you know, it, it's you know, it's a great thing if somebody some news agency picks it up. But really the key component here is you want to use these press release sites to get high rankings in the search engines from the backlinks, get more exposure, and as I'll touch on, I have a final point that I'll touch on that. Press release sites are read by bloggers and other people looking for story ideas as well. So I talked about you know journalists and things like that, but also you know just your average bloggers in your niche. People you know 
wanting story ideas for their website will look at press release sites as well. So if they like what you have to offer, they might get in touch with you, and it might be another opportunity to you know build exposure for your business. They might even take the press release and copy and paste it on their own site, um, you know, which is allowed from with a lot of these sites because they're just like the article sites. So that's certainly a component there that you want to consider. The press releases themselves can even rank high in the search engines for really good niche keyword phrases. So you can actually, using the keywords in the title of your press release, and I'm going to touch on that in the following slides, you can actually see an improvement in your rankings uh, by actually having the press release itself rank in the search engine. And so it's just one other factor you can use to kind of help get more uh, you know, traffic through the search engines onto your press release, which then builds up your credibility you know is what the press release does which then again encourages them to click kind of like we talked about with article marketing search engines you know can pick up these article directories and and pages very well and so people go in they read your article they see your you know your authority on the subject they like what you're talking about they click on your resource box you know um, you I haven't even had a chance yet to talk about social book marketing video marketing and, and podcasting but they're all the same concept as well and those are, are later topics and the same thing you know applies as if they were to find your website through the search engine if they find your press release and so you can I hope you guys are starting to see how this all kind of works together for you um, in a good circle so what is a press release a press release is an announcement of an event performance or other newsworthy item that is issued publicly so basically you know it's a way and I grab this you know this you know canned uh, response online just so you guys know um, you know so basically it's a it's an announcement of an event performance or other newsworthy item that's really the best way to sum up a press release I was trying to think of a better way to say it and that pretty much sums it up right there so that you know hope kind of gives you an idea as to what we're talking about so a short it's basically a short ride of talking about your company website and or services again talking about what you offer it might even be something as far as talking about something within your niche so let's say that you are in the pet supplies niche and you want to talk about you know a new type of automatic pet feeder that's you know that that's becoming popular among pet owners and so you want to do a press release on that or maybe it's uh, maybe you're a golfer and you want to talk about a new brand of putter you know that's coming into the industry and so it gives you an excuse to write a press release to kind of you know bring up a newsworthy topic uh, maybe it's something that's actually going on in, in the news right now and it's somewhat related to your niche and you can write up about it. We've got a lot of talks about, you know, poor economy this, bad investments, blah, blah. You know, you could come up with, you know, my affiliate marketing business is thriving in tough economy, whatever. You know, so you kind of get the idea. You can spin news, news angles as well. So some ideas, you know, for a press release, let's say you just redesign your website, even redesign your logo. Believe it or not, that could warrant a press release. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go take these press releases and you want to blast them out to your uh, local newspaper because they could really care less, honestly, about your new logo. But the way that the reason I'm telling you to use these kind of deals is because these press release sites will pick it up and it's just another excuse for you to get yourself out there with the press release, to get yourself a little more exposure. So the more of these you can do, and I'm not saying just spit out a bunch of junk, but I mean literally, the more of these press releases you can get out there based on your niche, uh, it's gonna help you, it's gonna help build backlinks, but also that authority gets you that exposure. And that's really what it's about. It's all about exposure and getting as much content in as many places as possible, and that's really what traffic's about. Um, it could be you know that you just posted a new product review. I've done press releases uh, where I actually was reviewing an affiliate product, and it worked quite well for me. And you know, basically, you know, I just you know basically said, uh, name of the product review reveals interesting findings. That was like my title, of my press release. So you know, um, so depending on the product you're promoting, let's say you know it's it's the West program. West program review reveals incredible findings. You know, or or Instant Form Pro re reveals amazing find you know findings traffic um, generation blueprint system reviews you know review uncovers amazing secrets you know something like that and that could be used as like a you know as your product review you know if you're doing a press release on that and you wrote up a product review and you know basically you know you just position yourself as an expert and this is kind of a nice little subtopic here for you guys to to chew on and that's basically you know leverage yourself and and say that you are an expert or your company or you yourself are an expert in reviewing digital products people don't know you know just tell them that that's you know in the press release that's what I put you know I put Paul Counts is the owner of, of Count on Us LLC which is an expert you know in internet marketing and reviewing internet marketing products you know <laughs> and so I built up the authority in the press release 
I talked a little bit about the, the product and why it was so great in my quote section of the press release, and I'll talk about some of these things here in a bit. And you know, basically just talked about why um, you know why this was a great product, and then you know said that on my website I give a detailed review and to go check out my site, and that got me a lot of traffic. So those are some ideas you can do. Maybe you made a new blog post, and I'm not saying do this on every blog post. But maybe you've you spent some a lot of time on a really good blog post. Maybe it was like the top ten. You know, maybe you spent a lot of time on a, on you know. 50, 50 ways to to promote your website. You know, maybe you put a lot of effort into that, and so you launch a press release that you put out an article or a free blog about you know fifty ways to increase website traffic. You know, so that might be something that I could do to get more people into my program. For example, something you could do maybe it's um, you know maybe you're you have a pet website again. You know, so you're going to talk about you know twenty five ways to um, you know, to comb your dog's hair, you know, what, whatever it is that you decide to write on, you could do a press release, you know, so-and-so, you know, whatever.com announces uh, or launches an article, uh, you know, or, or hot article on 25 ways to groom your dog, whatever it is, you could even angle that article into a press release, basically is where I'm getting at. And then it might be just an opinion you have, you know, so it might be uh, kind of what you're feeling, you kind of put out some quotes out there, you know, so I could do something like, um, you know, people are, um, Paul Count says economists are crazy, you know, that might get people some attention and then I talk about how, you know, people are still buying things online and people are still spending money online, I don't know what they're talking about and, and you know, I could talk talk in that manner, you know, so I could kind of give an opinion about, you know, something big in the news I could talk about but spin it for your niche, you know, that kind of thing. So kind of be like a, kind of a rebel but, you know, don't, you know, obviously say something stupid, but you know, just kind of do, be kind of a rebel in a way if you want to, you know, kind of stand out from the crowd because they're going to be like, well, that's interesting. You know, this guy says economists are crazy. You know, why does he say that? Why does he think that? And, you know, give your opinions that way. So there's some ideas for press release topics, you know, very basic. I mean, really, you can spin just about anything into a press release. So keep that in mind. And a press release, um, all it just needs is to have an angle. So it just needs an angle of some sort. And an angle is basically the direction that you're writing your press release. So it's it's the uh, purpose for your press release, so to speak. So how do you write a press release? So first thing I talked about is you want to develop your angle first. So basically the angle is going to be the topic of your story. So before you start writing your press release, you need to come up with, okay, what is the subject that I'm going to write, write about concerning my niche? You know, and, and since most of you, this will be the first time you're writing a press release. Your first press release is typically going to be something about, you know, announcing your website. Maybe it's announcing your free report. You know, like every time you set up a squeeze page and you give somebody something free, that could warrant a press release. You know, almost every time you make an informative blog post, that could be another press release for you. So when it's your first time, it's usually going to be announcing your website to the public. You know, you're just going to be publicly announcing your website. And so your angle is going to be around your website and around your niche. You know, so that's an example of your angle. So you want to create a newsworthy title for your press release that includes your keywords. And the reason I say kind of a newsworthy title, and you know, it's, it doesn't mean it, it needs to be newsworthy as far as the Wall Street Journal is going to pick it up or New York Times, but it needs to be newsworthy to the effect of, you know, of something, you know, to the effect of let's, you know, let's just say, um, you know, I I designed my new website, you know. So a press release is not an article. So that's something. That's the point I'm trying to get across there. And so you know, your press release and article are going to be a little bit different, you know, in how they're structured, and I hope you're going to see that here. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So your regular old article title may not work as well as you know for a press release. So keep that in mind. So that's why you kind of want to have some sort of an angle to position it and spin it, so that it be, can come off as kind of a news story. And some of these press release sites will actually delete your press release if they don't feel it's newsworthy. I've actually had that happen before. So it's you know so then I, I learned real fast that you need to just create newsworthy titles for your releases. And when I say include your keywords, I'm going to give you guys some examples here in a bit of, of a good press release title, but you want to include your keywords, and it's, if you can, include it um, the first part of your press release, but at least try to include it somewhere in your press release. So, you know, if your press release is how to refinance a mortgage, you know, that's your niche, you know, so, um, so you could come up with your website, you know, www, you know, like uh, mortgagesecretsinside.com, you know, whatever the domain name is. Um, you know, it announces you know how to refinance a mortgage. You know, ebook or something like that. So you get your keyword in there. It's kind of slightly newsworthy because you're announcing the launch of a free ebook or your ebook, whatever it is. And you know, that's that gets you started in your title. 
The next thing is you want to write an introductory paragraph that lays out your press releases point. And so, you know, that's going to be your first sentence. Your first paragraph will be two or three sentences made up of just you simply talking about what your press release is about, you know, what why you're writing your press release, the purpose of it, you know, whatever your angle is, you're going to address that in this first paragraph. So whether the angle is I am, you know, launching a new website, you know, then go ahead and put that in there. Um, so that would be like the angle of your press release, you know, so so and so, you know, Paul Counts or your business name if you've you know turned your business into a corporation you know is announcing the the launch of their new website www dot you know whatever and then you know basically give like a feature of this website this website's main objective is to help people learn how to do this this and this with this free report that they're giving away on their home page that kind of thing write two to four paragraphs for the body of the release as well so the body of the re release is very similar to the body of the article it's just basically some information and when I say put quotes in there I mean you know quote yourself you know and I'm actually gonna read a press release that I wrote here in a second um, but basically you wanna quote yourself so come up with some with some quotes that you as the owner of the website could be making related to your niche build up your credibility as well by putting your name in there so you know so it says uh, John Smith, owner of www.thiscoolwebsite.com, you know, and then you know, so so maybe say a quote or, or find a statistic about your niche and quote that statistic or something, and you know, and, and basically say you know we're we're striving to be customer oriented with our great review website, you know, says John Smith, owner of CoolWebsiteReviews.com, uh, you know, John added, you know, uh, there's a big need in the golf niche to have great golf review ebook review websites you know just come up with some quotes for yourself use that to kinda excite people about going to your site you know so maybe talk about your free report because what's interesting with press releases that I found and this is an important point I'm about to make is that with press releases you know they they don't want you just to be advertising your business base you know I mean yes you are kinda advertising your business I mean that's pretty that is kinda the purpose let me rephrase that but they don't want you to be pitching throughout your press release because that's not a good press release anyways but in the quote part I found that it's a great way that you can actually pitch what your ideas and feelings are because a quote is different than like just the written part of the press release you know the press release has got the core details of who what why and where and those are important things to know you know who what why and where you know kind of the the main keys of journalism and who what why where and uh, I think I said why yeah sorry <laughs> so so basically those would be um, you know the kind of the the written part of it or the the text based the article almost the article style of it so to speak you know where you have the details the detail area and then the quote part where you're quoting yourself that's where you really sell people on why why your site's the best why you have a great review site why you you created your site why you have a passion behind behind your business or whatever it is and, and encourage people to check out your site in there and because that's perfectly okay and I found right there the press release sites have no issues with you when you're quoting you know kinda of the the sales pitch part so to speak you know the call to action almost so there's no issues there and so definitely want to put quotes in there so build your credibility give you a chance to to maybe pitch a little bit more about your business and, and you know not not that you should just you know tell people your sites the best around but just tell people you know different components you have that kinda of set you apart from the competition maybe that makes your site better in a way you know so don't just you know say my site's cool you know but but add some value in there about why why your site's better or why you did what you did with your site and kinda of use that in the quotes if you can and I found quotes are a great way to kinda of expand a press release because sometimes the details are kinda of small and you wanna to try to have around 200 um, at least 200 and, and some words 250 is the best way to go and if you can get it above 300 you're gonna be in really good shape but uh, above 200 for sure you want to try to strive for at least 250 if you can so sometimes if I'm short on words I can come up with a good couple of quotes that I'm gonna say about this website or or whatever I'm writing about for my client and you can really fill in some some gaps right there so so that's how you you know go ahead and write your press release and then you want to include at the end of it just a short closing paragraph and, and in that short closing paragraph that's where you just say for further information you know call your your phone number if if you want people to call you or e or or excuse me don't put in your email cuz then you'll get all sorts of spam deals but um you know check out my website now i made the mistake once of 
um, you know, silly me, but I submitted a press release online with my cell phone number um, for my pet niche. And you guys are probably gonna all go run out there and find it. But um, anyways, this in the pet niche I was in, it, I had all sorts of phone calls, you know, coming in like just you know from from customers and just different things, you know, requests or just even just random calls and just you know stuff like basically stuff that my number you know shouldn't have been used for kind of thing and and that was a mistake I made and so you know so one of the best things you can do if you really want to have a phone number make sure it's like your office line that you know you you aren't gonna always have on you kind of thing so uh, but in your closing paragraph include your phone number include your website link right in there it just basically you know it's not like you're saying check out the site for great information because that sounds a little salesy but just say for further information www dot because that's how most press releases end anyways it basically think of your press releases as like a news story and you're gonna be just fine if you know read the newspaper if you don't read the newspaper then go ahead you know go online and look at like USA Today dot com or, or something like that and see how they structure their news articles and that's kinda how you should write and position your press releases and it's also not a bad idea to check out the news News sites, those news sites, because you can see what kind of topics they they're writing about, and you might be able to spin a lot of those topics for your niche. So keep that in mind as you go about writing your press release. So here I'm going to go ahead and um, show you guys real fast a press release that I wrote. All right, so here on the screen here, I've got a press release that I have written, and um, this press release is about Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractors, because as you will recall, that's the little website that I'm promoting for this example, which this site still ranks on the first page, even though I have, uh, what's funny about it, and I don't recommend you do this, but I launched the site without any relevant content, but it's still on the first page for its keyword phrase, so it shows you how easy it is to rank for a lot of these local terms. And this site's, you know, like number two or something in Google with the site with no content on there. I just launched the site. I have a good domain. I have title tags placed correctly. And we did like a ping on it or something. But, um, you know, that site's still ranking on the first page. But this is a press release I wrote up about this website. I'm going to actually add a few pages of content. Because what I'm actually going to do with this website, and this is a model you guys are actually going to learn at the end of this course. But... I'm going to actually take this website, once it's got some rankings, I'm going to be contacting some local um, chiropractor, you know, chiropractors in Tulsa, Oklahoma and offer them you know, to buy the website for a certain price. And so we'll see how that goes. I'll report back to you, but that's basically the strategy there um, of you know, what I'm doing this for as an example for you guys. But basically, to go back to the press release, this is a short press release that I wrote related to this business. I'm going to actually expand the font a little bit so you guys can read it. If you want, this will also be available in the back end of the website, so you guys can actually, uh, you know, take it, use it as a swipe file if you want to, um, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, take it and submit it yourself with my URL in there. That's fine too, but it'll be there as a swipe file if you guys want it. So um, basically, Tulsa, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractors are hard at work adjusting the city of Tulsa. Notice I kind of used the play on words there because um, chiropractors do adjusting, you know. So you know, if you want to try to be kind of creative. Um, I'm not the most creative marketing artsy kind of guy, but sometimes I get creative. So, uh, but anyways, um, the website TulsaOklahomaChiropractors.com shares information and resources related to finding a good chiropractor for your next back or neck adjustment. And then I go into saying, you know, in a quote right here, our goal with this website is to give website visitors access to a variety of information and resources related to finding and choosing the best chiropractor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, said the owner of the website. We understand that every day more and more people are going online to find information and find chiropractors in Tulsa, so we created this resource for them. The site features a new design that allows for an easy way to find information and resources that will help in finding a reliable chiropractor in the Tulsa area. And I'm almost done. I just want to read you guys so you guys kind of see how this flows. The owner of the website also pointed out that a new article will be coming online soon that discusses the common myths people have with chiropractors. And then I go into saying a quote, rumors and myths about chiropractic care have been floating around for years and so hopefully this article will help shed some true light on this topic. He mentioned that some of the myths people have are related to the safety of neck adjustments and the fact that people think you have to seek care for the rest of your life if you have a back issue. These concerns and more will be covered in the new article to be posted soon. For further details on finding a good reliable Tulsa Oklahoma chiropractor, you can go online to www.tulsaoklahomachiropractors.com. So there you see it's a very basic, very bland, I mean this is a very basic website that I'm promoting here, yet I was still able to spin a press release with my keyword phrase in there. Now 
what I did in there that you know you guys should do and that's include your name I kept saying the owner of the website and there's a reason I did that for this example and that's because I do not want the name Paul counts in this case associated with um, Tulsa Oklahoma chiropractors because for one that's not my niche Two, I'm not a chiropractor and three I'm gonna be selling this business to chiropractors so I don't want my name I don't want a fake name I don't really want any kind of name on this press release um, unless it, it's that chiropractor's name and so that's why I went ahead and did that just so you guys are aware of the logic there so if you're gonna do this you know eventually like take everything I'm teaching you and and set up little mini niche um, websites for different local businesses to sell and you're doing the press release don't really include your name in there because you're not really gonna be the owner of that site for long if your intention is to sell it so that's why I did not put my name in there but in your case wherever I said the owner of the website that would be right where you would insert you know says so and so so and so, you know your name John Smith owner of or John Smith president and founder of whatever it is so there is a, a brief press release for you to look at and that will be available in the back end again for everybody that wants to see it. So we're just going to jump back here and we're going to be talking about writing a good press release title. So how to go about writing a very good press release title. So try starting with your targeted keywords like you talked about. And you want to also include the angle of your press release. So the topic of your story in the title. So here's some examples of of what I think are good press release titles. You guys may not think so, but um, these are just some ideas that I, I put together, some good examples that you guys could take from and you know kind of spin however you want to. So there's that one we just went through, Tulsa, Oklahoma Chiropractors Adjusting the City. The core key word there is Tulsa, Oklahoma Chiropractors. Um, golf Training Aids website reviews top products. So that's kind of uh, the key word phrase there is golf training aid. So I included that into the subject line. And if you're wondering if this is black hat, this is not black hat or anything at all. This is just basically, you know, you're helping the search engines. This is the content they want to give. They want to deliver that content. You're going to put it on these different websites. You know, they rank these websites. So you're just being smart about how you are positioning your press release and your in your information. Because what what a lot of people make the mistake of, and I used to do this a lot, where you put the business name first in the press release, or you put just your business name and you don't have any keywords up there. Well, well, that doesn't do you much good unless they're looking up your business name. And in some cases, you want to have you know kind of your business name up there because it's a good way to kind of um, you know because sometimes as as people become more famous in an industry, people like there's there's always a hater for every you know. I've always go by the rule of thumb, a third of the people love you, a third hate you, and a third care less about you. And and that's a philosophy I've gone on, and that's usually true out there. And so the third that hates you sometimes will go out there and say stuff bad about your business or who you are as a person or whatever it is. And so you can kind of cover that up with press releases. So it's a great way to kind of blanket yourself. And you know another way to brand yourself and use that in a beneficial way, you know, with your name up there, your business name kind of thing. So... Um, so basically, um, you know, with your with your press release title is, um, you know, put in your core keywords there up there because the press release sites are again considered authority sites and search engines rank them well. And the reason goes right back to title tags. Remember, I talked about title tags being so important. I talked about it during the article marketing series, during even the first, you know, where I talked about the twenty four hour traffic plan, and in the other the SEO call, obviously, I talked all about title tags. I'll probably every single call probably bring up title tags because they're so important. Well, these press release sites naturally will take your title of your press release, most of them, and they will automatically put that in as their title tag when they publish your press release. And so that's why you want to include your keywords up there because they're going right up there in your title tags. So here's a few more uh, press release titles for you to look at using, um, you know, using the title uh, or the keyword in the title. Now, you want to get it as far to the left, the keyword phrase, and, and the reason is because Google reads left to right, and they'll put authority on it, if, more authority if it's to the left, but if it won't flow to the left, put it in the middle, put it at the end, you know, whatever the case might be. So like, you know, bird watching binoculars, that's a keyword phrase that this press release could be targeting. So I just took the subject, best bird watching binoculars revealed online. That's kind of a catchy press release that'll get people to read probably if they're into bird watching. You know, dog to training collars on sale today. The dog to training collars, they're a brand of dog collar, you know, so there's the brand name dog to training collars. That's the keyword phrase. Weight loss tips website fights back against obesity. So weight loss tips, there's the core keyword phrase in your uh, title of your press release. So hope this kind of gives you guys some ideas, you know, when you're writing about your niche. And use what I've talked about with keyword research tools 
I brought them up now, I think on two or three calls now, the AdWords keyword tool, you know, just the various keyword tools that I keep addressing. There's a reason I keep going back to those. And so I'm not going to cover that on this call because we've covered that, you know, two or three times now. But use those keyword tools to come up with your core keyword phrases to use within the titles of your press release. Uh, here's another one, we fit in stock online at wefitavailability.com. That's my website if you guys want to check it out and buy we fit. <laughs> but uh, basically we fit in stock, that's the keyword. Um, you know, we fit in stock online. Those are two actually keyword phrases in one right there. Um, so notice how I got the keyword phrase plus I was able to brand my domain name. So that's another idea you could do, you know, so you could do um, you know, bird watching binoculars on uh, online at we fit or on, online at birdwatchingbinoculars.com, you know. Um, you know, whatever the case might be. Golf training aids online at golf um, trainingaids.com you know so you kind of brand your website so you can kind of see how you can take these options pause this slide you know when you're on it and just start watching this again so you understand some good titles to use here's a good example you know of your press release introduction paragraph um, I'm, I'm gonna just let you guys read this again I'll read it one last time this is what I actually just read when I addressed the entire press release but I just want to show you guys for your introduction because it's such an important part and it's, it's an easy part for you but basically you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractors are hard at work adjusting the city of Tulsa and a new website has been launched to highlight a Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractor. The website, then I give the URL, shares information and resources related to finding a good chiropractor for your next back or next adjustment. Very basic, two to three sentences will do the trick. You just give them the, the main points of your press release, the main points of your topic, and you just go to town. So, um, you know, two or three sentences, and then you just easily just go in giving details of your website, giving details of maybe, um, you know, what you have going on. So maybe you're launching an ebook, maybe you're launching a, a freebie uh, giveaway, you know, maybe you inserted a product into some special giveaway event, or maybe, I mean, whatever it is, you can spin a press release about it for your niche, you know. Um, you know, maybe, again, it's the blog post idea. So I hope you guys just, you know, get the ideas going. Uh, maybe you have a special webinar coming up or a, or a teleseminar, or free training, or whatever it is, you get the idea there. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is submitting your press release online. So I'm actually going to go through and submit my press release online to one of these sites. Now, a great one to submit your press release to is prweb.com. But I want to caution you on that one. You probably aren't going to want to submit every press release there unless you have a big budget. Um, they do cost some good money. If you do like their $80 option, and and that's kind of like a, you know, their $80 option is good. They have a $200 option that's really good. It gets you a lot of places. But this site really gets your press release out there. It's a really high authority site. You know, it really gets it out there, I will say, because it will mass distribute it to a whole bunch of other sites that you can't really submit to on your own that only they can submit to. So they have a good network, but um, it, it's really best served for whenever you launch a new, you know, maybe it's a new um, product or a new training platform and you want to spend 80 bucks or, or even up, up to $200. They even have a $360 option. They'll go out to the Associated Press. And if you're going to do that, I just want to caution you so you guys don't come back and say, you know, and yell at me because you felt like you got ripped off. Um, I'm cautioning you, don't, don't do it unless you have the money, for one. Um, but also, you know, only do this if, if it's something that's really newsworthy that you're really going to get some benefit from. Um, and, and by that effect, I'm meaning, you know, if it's, if it's you giving an opinion that might become kind of a newsworthy thing that might go viral, submit that. If it's like the launch of your entire training system, maybe that, that's a good opportunity to submit it. And you probably won't want to do the AP release unless you, um, you know, the AP, AP release, unless you really, really have something that you feel is newsworthy, then you would consider that. But it will get you a lot of traffic. I'm not going to lie there. It'll get you a lot of traffic. It's just a matter of a budget thing, you know? So just like, you know, pay-per-click, that'll get you a lot of traffic. But, you know, you know, only only use it if you have money, you know. <laughs> so, um, but that's prweb.com. I included that one because uh, how could I not include it? Because it's so authoritative um, as far as press releases go. But all the other ones I'm sharing with you are free. Uh, some of these do have an upgrade option, and, and you know, I, you can kind of leave it up to you if you want to choose to upgrade them. I've actually found some of them give you some really good benefits for like a twenty dollar upgrade. You can actually get some really phenomenal benefits that you can get from PR Web. Um, not as many distribution points but still some decent you know some some decent results from it so if you have a little tighter budget maybe consider one of these sites and choosing their upgrade option 
Now this site right here, it's it's the worst domain ever, but it's actually a great site. I've talked about it before. It's got dashes all over the place, but it's a very high authority site. Um, these press releases will rank really high. Like in fact, this is the one I mentioned. I recommend in the 24-hour traffic plan that we first went over. And the reason I recommend you submit to them is just because they get picked up so fast. I mean, and I'm actually going to submit to them right here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open up this press release and show you guys how to submit a press release. So we are here on free-press-release.com. Now I want to uh, let you guys know that all press release sites, you know, they all don't look the same, but they look very similar. So what you're going to be looking for when you first get to a site, you're either going to be looking for a register button or a submit press release, submit release option. And most of the ones will have like a submit release or submit option, and it will tell you if you're not logged in, so therefore you know that you need to have an account. So in this case, I'm just going to log in to this particular account. Let's choose a different one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and log in here. And you're just going to choose on the left side here, submit a press release. And this is just a test account I have. Um, so you've got here... Uh, a free press release option or you have a premier release option now the premier release it's only a dollar so it's not that bad uh, for you to do and it gets you exposure on their home page so it's not a bad idea so if you do want to invest some money you could go with the premier release plus it will give you an active link to your site because I will say though just because you're submitting a press release not every single one of these sites will give you a live active backlink uh, the majority of them will but it's also more or less just more to get your site more exposure, get your name more exposure, and that's why you still submit to all these press release sites. So for this example's sake, I'm just going to choose the free option. I can upgrade it later if I really want to, and just choose next. And almost every press release site is going to be laid out similar as far as how, when you submit it. They're going to have a title option, a summary option, and a news body option. So the title option here is we're just going to take that and plug in you know Tulsa Oklahoma chiropractors adjusting the city so there's our title and then the summary I usually just take the first sentence or so first one or two sentences if you want for the summary you could come up with your own unique summary if you really wanted to uh, it's not a bad idea to do that but just for time's sake and, and ease I just usually just take the first paragraph and then the news body. Now, one thing I do with the news body, just like I do sometimes when I'm submitting, you know, if I'm submitting articles manually or if, if somebody else is, I recommend that you open up a notepad file. So I've got my notepad file up here, and I recommend that you paste that, um, copy and paste that notepad file, um, you know, into your notepad file. Because what happens is you notice how it kind of all jumbled everything together, so there's no separation for paragraphs. And that's why it's really important that you go ahead and put it into Notepad so you can clean this up really easily. And then that way you don't have to clean it up on every press release site. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up really fast. If you really want to be able to see it quickly, just take the word wrap off. And then every one of these lines is going to be a new paragraph for you. So, so once you have that, just go ahead and keep the word wrap on. And then you just copy it all. I just hit Control A to copy it and control C or you can highlight it all so by taking the mouse and scrolling over it I just want to make sure this is easy for you guys that you highlight it all you right click and you choose copy so again I right clicked and I chose copy and I'm gonna go right back to the press release website right click and choose submit so what you're gonna do after doing that is go ahead and scroll on down here and put in the little verification most of them have a verification option um, this case they off they ask for tags so the tags would be like you know keyword phrases related to your niche so mine is Tulsa Oklahoma uh, chiropractors and chiropractic care maybe back pain specialist whatever it is um, you know you get the idea so you put in your keywords related to your niche so every niche is going to be different um, the optional option here, they have a website and it's optional here because I did not do the upgrade. Now some of these sites, they don't care, you know, it's it's usually just there, you know, they don't care if you pay or not. The website features there, everyone's going to be slightly different. The industry, uh, most of them have an industry column. So this is where you just use your best guess to find how your website apply, applies and fits in. Every one of them I found has slightly different 
you know industry uh, ways they do their industries and that's okay so um, so what you're gonna do in this case is I'm talking about chiropractors so it's kind of under health um, particular you know let's see I believe yeah that's the health niche lifestyle health and fitness so that's what I'll put that in there so whatever niche your business is in pets you know choose that niche so you know the drill there contact information uh, put in your name um, there you see that that's the fictitious name I'm going under here um, so you can just plug that in there if you want to as the author now in this case uh, what's great about these sites if you were to sell this business you could go down and edit this information you don't necessarily have to though um, but they will publish some of these details so if you know if you do want to get your name out from under it you can otherwise you can just leave it out there um, you know so I'm just going to stick my name in there because I'm going to change it to their name whenever I sell this business so um, that's what I'm going to do so you can just plug in your you know your basic information your address and then I like to put my website in down there so, um, so let's just plug in our website again let me put in my main address and you don't have to put in your main address unless they require it but I just do sometimes because it builds up some credibility and just plug in your website there and the reason I'm putting it here instead of up above where it says websites because I didn't upgrade this particular press release and they'll let you put in that information because they even tell you so basically just fill out these forms just like you know just read through these forms you know so they're, they're not rocket science and when you're done just choose submit press release it's gonna take just a moment and notice this site automatically has automatically now been submitted so here's something that you guys can do right off the bat if you guys want to start getting some results now notice you know obviously there's gonna be ads around here I was sharing this with somebody once and they were freaking out because there were advertisements around well just like Ezan articles that's how these sites make their money so don't worry about it your main concern is you know the content that people are gonna read so here's the press release right here now one thing I wanna show you guys is to do is take the uh, you know the actual URL and go over and ping the website so we're gonna just go over to pingomatic.com and we're just going to ping the website here now there's really not much of a need with free press release to ping it because they actually ping this thing so quick like they must have it set up with their site to already ping as well so it's gonna pick up this content really 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 fast and so I'm just pinging it really fast and that was just at pingomatic.com so here's our press release in probably you know sometime tomorrow or so this will probably be indexed more than likely it might even be indexed in the next you know several hours that's very common with this site and I'm gonna wager a guess that this press release will rank at the top of the search engines and so you guys can apply the same exact strategy when you're out there submitting press releases so I'm gonna just return to the show here and show you a few more sites to write down and take a look at so here's a few more sites um, oh, boy that was really nice of me okay so here's a few more sites to write down prlog.org pagerelease.com that's a new one I actually just came across today um, so it, it looks really good i-newswire.com 888pressrelease 1888pressrelease.com pressrelease.spider.com those are all really good press release sites to submit to um, for you they're, they're free all of them except for PR web but some of them do have a paid option that you could consider and you can run a Google search for the following phrases to find more PR sites and that's really how I come across my list of press release sites now I will say I'm gonna add in another little deal back there when we when I stream this video I'll include for you a list of press release sites so you don't have to bother with going through this um, this mess so there will be a resource available to you when this video gets posted in the next 24 to 48 hours um, just so you guys are aware of that so type in keywords like free press release distribution submit press release press release submission free press release website submit press release free those kind of keywords are going to give you the best opportunity um, you know to find a great number of, of free press release sites and there's there's a core you know 50 really good ones there's literally hundreds of them out there um, there's there's some good ones what I usually gauge is if I see them on the first two or three pages of the search engines and I know that you know if they're all competing for kind of the press release site term 
they're you know they're the, sometimes the more high traffic ones anyways because they rank at the top. Same thing with like article directories, like I shared with you. Um, if you really want to find more article directories, type that in and see what kind of results you get because they're usually the bigger players when they're starting to show up anyways. Um, those are your big dogs. So same thing with press release sites. And the one the ones that I gave you on this page over here, those are some good ones for you to consider as well. So we're just going to jump over here to um, doing WordPress on SEO. I'm going to take a quick uh, break here, take a quick drink, and um, let you guys kind of settle your brain and settle all that in. Uh, while I get my drink, I am going to pause it on this slide so you guys can actually see um, right down this list of press release sites. Okay, so we are ready to go on WordPress SEO, and then after that, we're going to take questions. I'm actually, uh, we're actually doing really good on time. It's here at uh, 9:20 or 10:20 Eastern, so this uh, part won't take as long. But we're just going to cover doing some basic SEO things with your WordPress, so that you can have a search engine friendly WordPress page. Now, I recommend WordPress that you install WordPress uh, for really either as your blog platform or as your main website platform I really don't do any project without using WordPress in some way and that's because search engines love it I personally steer clear of Joomla uh, just for the fact that out of the box it's a mess to deal with um, it's basically I've dealt with client sites that are on Joomla it, it makes you go way too many steps to make it search engine friendly um, the URLs are nasty as all get out it's just not a good situation you know Joomla just they, they don't care enough, I guess, about the SEO or anything, but WordPress really does a good job of out of the box it actually indexes well, even though it's it's still not all that search engine friendly, but just out of the box with no changes, it does decent for you. So definitely recommend you do you use WordPress and one of the more popular uses of it, you know, is like whenever you launch a product page, for example, and you want to add content to it, you know, a lot of people they have a sales letter, you know, and that's all on their website. So you want to add in a blog to your website. So you want to have like, you know, your let's say you know traffic generation blueprints dot com forward slash blog you know that's something that that I would do you know when I launch this course out there and um, you know that's the name of it so traffic generation blueprints dot com forward slash blog and that gives me an opportunity to have like a sales slash squeeze page you know on the front end and you aren't just stuck on a one page site because remember as you will recall the SEO talk you're only limited to target so many keyword phrases so I can't type in you know video marketing press release marketing article marketing SEO training and all this as one title tag those would all be separate posts or articles that I would want to write well as far as managing the content WordPress is great and it acts as what's called a CMS or content management system so I just recommend just using WordPress attaching it to your sales page and it's a great way that you can get some good organic traffic to come to your website and then on the right hand side just put a banner to your home page or sales page or squeeze page whatever it is and encourage them you know to go there so if somebody finds my blog let's say I do a, a post on video marketing online or something you know that's the keyword phrase and somebody types in video marketing online they come through to traffic generation blueprint dot com forward slash blog now that's not up there so don't rush out and look at it but that's how I'm going I do have the domain so don't try to buy it but um, anyhow the that, that since you know I have the domain you know I just put in the forward slash blog on there and somebody finds my blog that way and I have a little banner on the right side because I did good SEO and they find me for video marketing online it's just another avenue somebody can come to my website and it will actually help you out with Alexa as I've seen with um, another guy on this call it gives you a lot of benefits there and so you definitely want to use WordPress in your business somehow um, one thing I love WordPress for is just creating niche affiliate you know affiliate type sites it's easy to do um, any kind of site, you know, any client I have, I recommend they, they use WordPress somehow in their business, and so I recommend you do the same. So here's how to make WordPress search engine friendly once you get it installed and uploaded. So once you get it, um, you know, download, or basically once you get it uploaded, you're going to want to download the following basic SEO plugins for WordPress, and you're going to want to install them. 
just so you guys know so you don't have to sit there and download all these these will also be available below the stream and all these will be up within 24 to 48 hours so you're gonna have the press release uh, little resources plus the SEO plugins I'm talking about here now there's a lot more SEO plugins you know I know um, some of you you know probably all know of some different ones I know of some different ones but these are some of the real basic ones uh, very basic ones that work well for search engine optimization um, you know because as it is WordPress does a good job with SEO all-in-one SEO that's the name of the plugin you're again gonna see that in the back end but if you do wanna if for some reason you guys wanna get these all tonight because it will take me a little bit of time to stream this video it's a huge file when they're done but um, you know go to Google and type in all-in-one SEO plugin go to Google type in Google sitemap generator plugin go to Google and type in sociable plugin and you know you'll get the download pages for these so um, but again I will have the links to these so download these three core plugins now all-in-one SEO is tremendous for SEO because it lets you change your title tags which again I keep talking about title tags again it lets you have a keyword rich title tag for every single post you make you can adjust your own title tag because by default WordPress will actually make your um, WordPress is actually will make your title tag be your article post of your blog now um, sometimes that's okay but not all the times because you know sometimes a keyword like top 10 ways to um, get your ex back you know for example that might not be a search phrase people look for but it's an interesting uh, subject that would bookmark well meaning people would find it popular in web 2.0 portals and come through to your site that way but it may not be um, you know basically it might not be the best as far as SEO goes because a lot of times people may not type in top 10 ways to get your ex back but they might type in how to get your ex back so maybe you could you know in your title tag reword it a little bit you know so it says how to get your ex back top 10 ways or something you know so you're kinda still doing that sales approach I talked about with your title tag before to kinda sell the click um, this all-in-one SEO gives you that ability it gives you the ability to write out your own uh, you know your short little meta keywords the meta description as well it's so important for SEO and it has a lot of it's just a great plugin to use the Google sitemap generator this is fabulous it does a good job of creating the XML um, sitemap that search engines love and and even Yahoo and MSN look at these XML search maps they call it Google sitemap generator but it works for Yahoo and, and uh, MSN as well and you could actually uh, submit this to Google webmaster tools so it's just Google webmaster tools if you want um, I personally don't do a lot with Google webmaster tools I you know probably could do more but um, you know basically um, it it doesn't help me get indexed, you know, or not indexed. But the Google Sitemap Generator, having just that sitemap on there, will by default help all your pages on your site get indexed. But whether or not you're a member of Google Webmaster Tools, that's not going to impact things or not. Um, but you could, there's multiple uses for it. You can submit this uh, XML sitemap to some different, uh, you know, to MSN's uh, side of things, Yahoo's, uh, Google. Just type in like submit sitemap or submit Yahoo sitemap submit. MSN sitemap or live search sitemap or submit Google sitemap something like that and then submit the, the generated sitemap they give you if you know if you don't aren't even submitting those at least you're just generating the sitemap using this plugin it's very easy and it will basically by default make sure all your posts get indexed which as it is WordPress does a great job of making sure your posts are indexed you usually don't have to worry about it and WordPress has a really good uh, you know ping set in there and I'm actually going to give you guys a ping list as well Sociable is the other plugin. It's a social web 2.0 plugin. We have not had a chance yet to really talk much about bookmarking. I've touched on on only wire and um, you know basically only wire and how to do bookmarking that way and how to do manual bookmarking with dig. But sociable and, and, and bookmarking is gonna be covered next week as well. Um, but with the social the sociable plugin, it basically will enable other users to your website to bookmark your content. Or it helps you as you're going through and bookmarking content, whatever the case might be. Uh, there, there's other Web 2.0 plugins out there. I, I personally like these three. You guys might have your other opinions, and that's fine. I like these just for basic getting started out of the box SEO. So um, what I'm going to show you here is how to go about and actually, you know, take these plugins and install them correctly. So I'm actually going to take just a moment and um, pause the screen and then open up a new window for you guys to take a look at. Okay, guys. So what I what I've got up here on my screen is I've got FileZilla open, and FileZilla is called a it's FTP client, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. I'm sure many of you are familiar with FTP by now, but um, if you're not, if you're just starting out, getting into the web stuff, um, you can do some research on FTP clients. I, I would do 
could give you more of an overview of that, but this is more of a traffic course than, than technical uh, training at this point. But if you guys do have questions on how to use this, feel free to submit a support test, uh, desk ticket. But I am going to show you live how to use this tool. It's a free FTP client, FileZilla is. I do almost everything, you know, free. I love the free applications. It's there's no use paying for something. You know, uh, I'd rather spend seventy dollars um, putting towards a press release on PR Web than I would spending on uh, another FTP client kind of deal. You know, so this one's free. Type in FileZilla into Google, and you will find it. Find the download page for it. So once you you download FileZilla, you're just going to install it just like you would install Microsoft Word or any other program on your computer. You know. Um, you just download it, click on the executable file, go through the on-screen instructions, and it's set up. And what you're going to do then, once you're inside there, it's going to ask you for your host uh, name, your username, your password, and your port. And all this data is typically going to be provided by your hosting company. I know especially if you have HostGator is hosting your site or um, Bluehost or one of them, they do a good job of emailing you your information or making it easily accessible. Uh, typically, it'll be like the password you use to log into your into your cPanel uh, control panel. If you you know if, if you have are hosted with them, you'll know what I mean by cPanel. Um, but when you're logged into your cPanel, that's the, usually the password that works right here. So, but if you need to call them, I know HostGator Bluehost have 24-hour support. Some other hosting companies have support tickets. You can submit to them and say, I need my FTP information. Can you help me with that? Um, you know, most of this data could also be found inside your control panel, which most hosting companies should have under the FTP area. So you're just going to put in that information, and you should um, have downloaded at this point, downloaded the plugins that I actually am going to give you guys or that you found online. You should have downloaded them to your actual computer. And what you're going to do then is they're going to come to you looking uh, kind of like this. They're going to be, you know, a zip file with a little zipper on it. And so you can just right click and choose extract all. And again, I just use what my computer gives me. There's no need to have a special extracting program or something. You know, you don't even need WinZip, um, contrary to popular demand. You can just right click and extract these files. And that's what I prefer to do because, again, it's free and it, I don't have to install software. So I just right click and choose extract all, and it extracts the plugin. So what you're going to do when it extracts them is sometimes it will, depending on where you download the plugin from, but it's going to actually. Um, give you the plugin. It might put the plug into what's called, you know, what I call a subfolder. So, for example, like this plugin right here that I just did. Notice how, if I click here, notice how it brings up another folder. Um, you know, and puts it right there. You're going to want to actually take it out of the subfolder. So you're going to want to take this little folder and move it. You know, so I, I just like to highlight it and I copy it, and I'll just move it out over here to this one. You'll copy and paste it out of there and replace that one and the reason you do that is because WordPress typically won't read that internal folder and so you know so that's the best bet especially with these three plugins so that in case you run into that that's what the issue is and again if you have questions on these plugins just let me know uh, but once you've extracted the plugins you're just going to log into your hosting account so I'm gonna go ahead and log in here and we're gonna go right on over to the website that we're working on the Tulsa Oklahoma chiropractor site so let's just jump right down here. And go ahead and choose WP dash content. WP dash content, that's the folder you're going to go for your WordPress. So you're going to go to WP dash content and you are going to choose plugins. Once you've selected plugins, you're going to notice I've already uploaded these three basic ones. But I'll show you the process just so you guys know how it works. Uh, basically, you just take this. You want to just make sure that the files are all there. But you just highlight it. You can right click and choose upload. Or you could take this file and you could actually drag it you know, over here if you wanted to. That's another option. Or you could highlight using the control key, highlight whichever ones you want to upload. You know, so notice how I just did that. Or you could just do control A, and that'll highlight all of them. And then you could write right click and upload all of those if you wanted to so that's an idea I'm just gonna take a you know another one here and just plug it in Google Analytics is another plugin you need but as I'll cover next week we're gonna go into that a little more in depth and you don't necessarily have to have their plugin I actually find it's just as easy to copy and paste their code on there but just so you guys see how it uploads and then it gives you a little status thing down here uh, but once you've uploaded the plugin, you're ready to go. 
And the same thing will apply if you happen to download a WordPress theme, just on kind of a side note, you're going to upload that to the themes folder. Whoops. So you're actually going to upload that to the themes folder by double clicking on themes. So that's how you go about doing that. And then I just hit that red X to clear out of there. And we're going to minimize the screen. And we're going to just jump right into the website now. So um, I'm going to go right on over here to the website. So you see on my screen now, I'm in the wp-admin is where I went to. So it's your website, you know, wherever your blog is. So in most cases, it's yourwebsite.com forward slash blog forward slash wp-admin, depending on how you set up your blog. And you're just going to go there and you're just going to log in. Now I'm using RoboForm. It really helps me speed up the process. It's a tool I recommend you guys get for you know a lot of this SEO and link building and submission type work. It really will help you out a ton. So go ahead. Once you um, log in here, you're going to be looking for the plugins folder in particular. So in this example, I'm going to be looking for plugins over here on the left hand side. And what you're going to notice here is let me just deactivate these for you guys so you guys see exactly how it's going to look for you so okay so you're over here and yours is going to say you know recently active or it'll just say you know your plugin options when you first install them and you're just going to choose activate your plugin so just click on activate right there it's very easy very basic process so what you're going to do you first upload the plugins if the plugins show up here, it means they were installed correctly. And then you just choose activate the plugins. And so that is that step. So you need to install and activate these three core plugins that I'm talking about. So the next step is you're going, and you guys kind of can sneak ahead there. So we're going to go right on to setting up your permalinks. So your permalinks is kind of how your URL structure is going to look. And that's an important search engine optimization factor. So I'm over here on WordPress, and here you can take a look at um, the back end here. The left side under settings is where you're going to go to do your permalink. So it's the left hand side is where you're going to do everything in WordPress 2.7, and you're going to choose permalinks. So in this case, I'm going to just select permalinks down here on the left hand side, and what you're going to choose is actually custom structure. Custom structure, and this is the exact string you're going to type in here. Forward slash percentage sign which you get by hitting shift and the number five key at the top of your keyboard you type in the word post name shift percentage sign forward slash and then what you're going to do after that is choose save changes and your permalinks are going to be set up correctly now so again it's forward slash it's custom structure so it's it's settings on the left hand side permalinks custom structure forward slash percentage sign post name percentage sign forward slash and what this is going to do for you it's going to make your um, links you know so it's going to make take actually the title of your of your post and it's going to actually turn them into what's called a permalink and it just it's really a good search engine friendly thing because by default most of your posts will have your keyword in there and it's just another thing it just puts nice little dashes between each word and it does a tremendous job of making your your blog search engine friendly so this phase you should have installed and activated the plugins and should have gone through with your permalink. So we're just going to go on to the next step here. So the next thing that you're going to do in this process is you want to set up what's called a ping list. So you want to set up so that every time you make a post it will automatically do pinging for you now they automatically set up uh, that site pingomatic.com that I was showing you they automatically have that actually queued up so whenever I'm, I'm assuming that pingomatic is the same way but WordPress automatically has it queued up to where whenever you make a new post of any of any sort it will automatically go out and ping that you know ping the website so that it tells us those, those uh, blog and ping places that your site has been updated and modified so they'll go in and update their little databases and that helps you get spiders activities to your site it helps with indexing you know I can make blog posts and with literally hours have that blog index and we're in sometimes minutes you can have new blog posts index using a nice ping list which I do actually provide for you guys a ping list and so I'll show you how to set up your ping list
So what you're going to do right back over here under um, settings, you're going to choose writing. And then you're going to scroll down under writing to where it says update services. And you're going to see here it's going to say pingomatic. And you would actually, if you want to, I've got a, a larger ping list. You could actually just take that ping list and just copy and paste it right in here in the update services area. So that's how another great way you can make you know WordPress 2.7 and WordPress search engine friendly. Um, more search engine friendly because it helps get spider bots back to your site. It just helps get your you know every time you submit it will ping it to 10 or 12 different pinging sites um, that will then again ping it out to who knows how many sites. You get a lot of pings, a lot of activity on your site, and there's a list that I will provide for you. That's a great list. All you're going to do with this list is take it and copy and paste it right in here. You know, over this pingomatic um, URL, so you would just highlight this one or just delete it and then paste in whatever I have. And then when you're done with these changes, just choose save changes. So, again, at this phase now, you should have gone in and set up your permalinks, um, installed and activated your plugins. And then the next thing you should have done is, um, you know, set up that ping list, fix the permalinks. And then there's one final step that I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so the final step, and I'm just going to make you come back here to take a look at it, is to set up your all-in-one SEO plugin. This is a and your other plugins. So you want to now set up your other plugins. So um, downloading them and installing them by uploading them, um, that's one thing. Now, if you're going to be doing several WordPress sites, I just like creating a folder called like WordPress plugins and themes, just so you know. It. So then you can just automatically reference that folder and jump right in there. Uh, but basically, um, you want to set up your all-in-one. SEO now. So what you're going to do to do that is go back to the uh, blog. So I'm just going to head back there. And we're going to go back to the WordPress 2.7 view and you're going to select under settings. You're actually going to see where it has your different blog setups. So you're going to see all in one SEO right there. And in this case, what it's going to do is give you, you know, it's going to tell you the home title and this is where you type in your nice search engine friendly title tag where you include your keywords there and this is just for your home page and then it's going to tell you your home description so you're going to say find a trusted Tulsa Oklahoma chiropractor and that's like your meta description and then you plug in your meta keywords you only need to do this once or unless you decide to update your title tags you can go back in here and you know I just keep their default settings where it says post title format I usually take off where it says blog title so there's a, a little dash in the middle or a up and down line in the middle. I'll take that out and just leave post title and I'll do the same for page title. And so that means that the post title or basically whatever set inside there for the post is going to be the title tag. Now um, basically all in one SEO and I'll show you in a second whenever you're making post will enable you to create your own unique title tags at the bottom of your post. So go ahead and choose update options after that because I just leave everything else the same and that's easy enough. Now still going on about all-in-one SEO when you're adding your new content to WordPress what you're gonna see back here is is um, you know back here when you make your post you type in your post so we'll just say you know test post and you wanna just say you know this is a test so you put in your post you you know copy and paste it however you do it Put in your tags for your post. That's a good thing, you know, search engine friendly thing to do. Whatever, you know, tags, keywords related to your post, put that in there. And then scroll down until you see, you know, it say all in one SEO. Now, one thing you can do with WordPress 2.7 if you want to is you can actually take and grab this and you could actually drag it up here to so it's a little more accessible for you, which I would recommend doing because you're gonna use it a lot. And then you just type in your title tag. So for example, you know, this title tag is test post. But if I wanted to make my title tag uh, keyword rich, you know, for something related to test post, so you know, this is a test might be my keyword phrase, and I know that's a really poor example, so let's use something different like you know, weight loss, weight loss tips, and so you kind of see the difference. And let's say that your post happens to do with you know, top 25 weight loss resources. Maybe that's your your article. And top 25 type articles, like I mentioned last week, do really well. Top, you know, any kind of top type what article does a great job. But, um, you know, so for example, top 25 weight loss resources may not be a searched for phrase. 
but weight loss tips might be better search for weight loss resources weight or weight loss tips weight loss information so you guys get the idea using the AdWords keyword tool you can identify the core keywords related to your article use those in the title create yourself a nice solid unique uh, meta description sell them on the click in that meta description and include that keyword and then put in your keyword tag right there and then that's uh, where you have all-in-one SEO all set up the final thing you're gonna do then is go in and um, we're just gonna navigate away from that page go right on over to settings again and this time you're gonna just choose sociable one more time and inside sociable you could actually set this up differently if you want to um, you know like for example there's some different things inside sociable that people use you know a little more frequently you know that might relate to your site so like if you have a business site site you know you might offer a LinkedIn option on there because that might help build some credibility that way um, you might offer a Twitter option you know like so you just look around here for um, you know tumblr for or a twit this you know so that's one I want to add so I could just click on that because I want to add it and then you could choose save changes and notice how it brought that up there and let's say that I want to get rid of Sven which that one's actually good um, Facebook dig let's say I want to get rid of Google their bookmarking tool isn't that great right now um, I decide so let's just plug that in and let's say that we want to grab another popular one like let's say um, let's just use live.com MSN's logo or let's use the LinkedIn logo and Mr. Wong he's a good one there we go so we'll use Mr. Wong and LinkedIn Mr. Wong gives you a good Mr. Wong's a good one to write back so he does give you a good search engine friendly backlink to your site that they can follow no problem so there you go digs fin delicious and then if you wanted to reorder these you could certainly do that so let's say that you want to drag this and reorder these excuse me it is not letting me do that but you should be able to drag and order those if you want to um, but that's how you set up your sociable and then the next thing with your Google XML sitemap you're just gonna go over here to XML sitemap and you just need to do this once but it says the sitemap wasn't built yet it says click here to build it for the first time I'm not going to do that because I don't have content on here but that's how you set up your XML sitemap so that's in the left hand side under settings and you can watch this video as many times as you need to to go back through so